What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to implement a merge sort sorting algorithm in python so let us get right into it all right guys so you really seem to enjoy these fundamental algorithm implementations in python and i already made a video on a binary search algorithm and today we're going to talk about the merge sort algorithm which is one of the most popular sorting algorithms and for those of you who are interested in runtime complexity and the analysis of algorithms merge sort has a complexity of n log n which is pseudo linear so it's written like big o of n log n and if i'm not mistaken uh this is true for the best case for the average case and for the worst case um i'm going to correct myself here somewhere if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's the case because for example other algorithms like quick sort have a basic um runtime complexity of n log n as well but the worst case is n squared so i think that's not true for merge sort i think merge sort is pseudo linear in all cases uh however if you're not interested in anything that is related to algorithmic complexity and runtime analysis you can just forget what i just said we're going to implement the algorithm and you're going to be able to follow along anyways for those of you who are interested in understanding uh, logarithmic or actually pseudo linear runtime and runtime complexity and algorithm analysis in general, I can highly recommend you to take a look at my full course on algorithms and data structures on this YouTube channel for free. It's a four and a half hour video where I teach you how to analyze algorithms, also the merge sort, but there we only talk about pseudo code, about mathematics and about theory. And here we're going to actually implement this algorithm in Python. All right, so let us get started with the implementation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the random library. So we're going to say import random, and we're doing this in order to generate a list of numbers. Now, if you have a static list of numbers already, you don't need to do that. You can just use that list and sort it, um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to generate a random list of numbers. However, we don't want this list to be different every time we start the script. We wanna have the same random numbers, but we still want them to be random, of course. Uh, so what we need to do here is we need to set a seat. We need to say random dot seat and I'm going to pass ABC here. And by doing that, we're going to get a set of random numbers. But every time we run the script, it's going to be the same set of random numbers. So we're going to say numbers equals and then we're going to say random dot rand int in between zero and 100 uh, for unnamed control variable in range a thousand. So what this does is it creates or it generates uh, or actually the other way around. Sorry, I wanted to do in the range zero to a thousand, a hundred values. So we're generating a hundred random values here uh, in between. So that the values are going to be in between zero and a thousand. And I do this in order to avoid duplicates as good as possible. So we're generating a hundred values. And since we have a thousand values to choose from, hopefully we're not going to have too many duplicate values here. Now, the basic idea of the merge sort algorithm is that we have a base function merge sort and then we have a helper function merge because the merge sort is a little bit like a diamond. So you start with a full list and you split that list up into into two halves and those two halves are then split up into two halves again uh, until in the end we end up with single elements. And then what we do when we have this uh, those values on a granular level, what we do is we start merging them together in the right order. So if you start with a list like um, one, two, uh, or actually this is sorted, let's say three, four, one, two, you would split them into three, four and one, two, and then into three and four and one and two, and then you would merge them together in the right order. So you would say three, four, one, two, and then you would say, okay, one, two, three, four. Um, we're going to see how to do that in the code, but that's the basic idea. You split them and you merge them. This is divide and conquer. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the actual merge sort function, which is then going to make use of the helper function that we're going to implement after that. So we're going to say def merge sort, we're going to pass a numbers list, and we're going to pass the boundaries left, right. There you go. And we're going to have a base case. So we're not going to add comments here. Uh, the base case is that or the terminating cases, if left is larger or equal to right, then we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to calculate the mid, we're going to say the mid is actually just left plus right floor division two, so that we have an integer and not a floating uh, floating point number. And then this is the divide and conquer part, 
we divide into two halves, we say, okay, call recursively the merge sort, the same function that we're having here, pass the list that we have, uh, but adjust the boundaries. So we want to have one half to the left, one half to the right. So we're going to say, okay, from left to middle is going to be one half. And then from mid plus one up until right is going to be the second half. So we divide. And of course, since this is recursion, um, since this is recursion, we're dividing inside of those function calls again. So if I have uh, eight values in this list, I'm going to split it into four and four. And then again, here I have four and here I have four, which means that I'm going to split again into two and two and one and one and so on. And once we terminate, once we have um, reached the base case, we're going to actually uh, merge these lists. So we're going to say merge and we're going to merge numbers list left right mid but this is a helper function that we have not implemented yet this is what we're going to do next all right so there are many ways to implement the merge sort and specifically the merge function i have chosen a way that is maybe not the most efficient uh, because i do something that is kind of redundant but it still works so feel free to improve on that function but what i do is i have this merge function and i pass again numbers list left right and mid and this is the actual thing where we have this uh, these lists split up into halves already and we merge them together. So what we do is we have uh, two halves and we pick the elements, the first elements, and we compare them because those halves are already sorted by nature. Because uh, in order to get to the merge function, you either have the individual values. So you either have just one value and one value, or you already have two sorted lists. And when you are at that point, you just have to look at the first elements and pick the smaller one and then uh, just uh, merge them together into a new list. So we're going to iterate over the list and we're going to pick the smaller elements always. And then once uh, we reach the end of one list, we're going to just uh, get the rest of the other list and then we have a merged list. So first of all, we're going to create copies because we're going to work with copies here. Uh, left copy is going to be number list from the left up until the middle plus one and right copy is going to be number list from middle plus one up until right plus one like that. So this is uh, these are just a copy so that we can work with those. And then we're going to say L counter and R counter for left counter and right counter. Uh, we're going to start them with zero zero and we're going to say sorted counter sorted counter is going to start at left. So left is not left copy left is also not L counter left is what we pass to the merge function. So what we do now is we say, okay, while the left counter or the L counter, now the names are maybe a little bit confusing, we have left we have left copy and we have L counter. Um, but while this L counter that we have initialized here with zero is less than the length of the left copy. So as long as there are still elements to be processed and compared in this particular list, we have not seen all of them. And as long as this is also true for the right counter and the right copy, so as long as we don't reach the end of any two of those lists, as long as this is the case, we're going to do what is uh, specified in this loop. And we're going to say, okay, if the left copy uh, on the index that we're comparing right now is less or equal to the right copy um, on the index that we're comparing here, if that is the case, we're going to pick this element, uh, this smaller element, and we're going to add it. Uh, we're going to, to put it at the position in the numbers list, so we're going to say numbers list sorted counter equals left copy L counter. Now, this might be confusing if you just look at the code, but the basic idea is following. We're going to go through the list until we reach the end of one half. Uh, and as long as this is not happening, compare if the left element uh, or if the element, if the if the first not yet processed element of the left list is less or equal to the first not yet processed element of the right list, pick this one and put it into the next position of the final merged list. This is the idea. Um, otherwise, we're just going to do the opposite. So otherwise, we're going to pick this one and do the same thing for the right copy on the right counter. 
Now, what's important is, of course, you need to increase the counter afterwards. So we're going to say L counter plus equals one here. And we're going to say R counter plus equals one here. Uh, so that we're progressing and sometime uh, at some point we're going to reach the end. And of course, what we always need to do is we need to increase the sorted counter because we're adding elements to the merged list. Now, the problem with this is, or it's actually, it's actually not a problem, but what happens after this loop is that one of the two lists reaches the end and the other list has still elements that are not uh, merged and they're all already sorted and they, they belong at the end of the merged list. So what we need to do here, and this is maybe not the most optimal way, but what we can do here is we can just iterate uh, through both lists. So we're going to say, okay, while L counter is less than uh, length of left copy, while this is the case, we're just going to say number list sorted counter equals left copy L counter. And we're going to, of course, increase the L counter and we're going to increase the sorted counter plus equals one. So this also serves as an if statement, because if we already reach the end of, um, of this list of the left half, then we're not even going to enter the loop. So this is also an if statement. Uh, so we're not going to do anything if this condition is not met or if it was already uh, the case here. Uh, we're not going to to do this again here. And we're going to just copy this and do this for the right list as well. So we're going to see our counter and write copy. And here also write copy our counter and our counter plus one. So the idea is that one of those two statements here is going to be uh, false. So one of those lists is going to come to an end and the other one is not going to come to an end. Uh, one of those is, uh, is the one that is uh, or that has come to an end and we're not going to enter that while loop. And the other loop is going to just uh, take all the remaining elements of the other half, uh, half and merge it to the existing merged result list. So this is the basic merge function. All right, so now if we didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to sort a list using the merge sort function. Uh, and for this, we're going to print numbers unsorted yet in order to see that this script actually works. You can see we have a list of numbers here, random numbers in an unsorted uh, way. And what we can now do is we can go ahead and say, um, merge sort numbers. Now, the important thing is, of course, we need to specify left and right. And since we're starting here, we're just going to specify zero as left. So the first index and the length of numbers minus one. So the last index uh, as the boundaries. And then we're going to repeat the print statement. And you're going to see that the list is going to be sorted. As you can see, we have 2, 16, 22, 47, and so on. It's sorted in ascending order in order to see that this is actually the case. Um, or actually, can we do it like that? Because then it's sorted. Let's just see if we say print sorted numbers before it's sorted, actually, if that is the same, our script worked, as you can see, it is the same list. So the merge sort actually worked. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. If you're interested in more of those fundamental algorithm implementations in Python, stuff like sorting algorithms, search algorithms, and maybe other uh, graph theory algorithms and so on. Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.